Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Dragon spacecraft arrives at the International Space Station. The P-85 kit-built hot rod enters flight testing. And Women in Aviation announces the Pioneer Hall of Fame inductees for 2015. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Even from up the Florida coast at a and headquarters, the latest launch of a Falcon 9 soared into the night sky for all to see. The successful launch on Saturday put this mission on a solid footing for a rendezvous and delivery of its payload early this morning. The space station's 58-foot robotic arm reached out and captured the Dragon spacecraft 18 minutes ahead of schedule at 262 miles over the Mediterranean Sea. The real drama behind the launch revolved around SpaceX's attempt to land the first stage on a robotic barge stationed well off the coast in the Atlantic Ocean. It's reported that the first stage did land on the drone port, but that the vehicle and the drone port were both damaged. According to Elon Musk via a series of timely tweets, quote, Rocket made it to drone spaceport ship, but landed hard. Close, but no cigar this time. Bodes well for the future, though." End quote. The rumble of a radio has been replaced with the growl of a V8 in the kit-built P-85. The P-85 is a derivative of Altitude Group's radial rocket airframe, with changes to accommodate a V8 firewall forward power plant package utilizing the proven high-performance LS series of V8 engines. As of a few weeks ago, the P-85 made its first flight, and it's now an experimental Phase 1 flight testing. The P-85 features a two-seat rugged composite airframe designed for aerobatic flight, as well as comfortable cross-country cruising. Altitude Group LLC has been manufacturing and marketing the Radial Rocket TD and Radial Rocket RG line of high-performance composite airframe kits since 2011. The P-85 is the newest addition to the product line. After the break, Women in Aviation honors history and historians. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. Well, we love to hear from our loyal Airborne Unlimited viewers, so if you have a story suggestion, send it to news-spy at aero-news.net. Three women who changed aviation history won't be forgotten, now that they're part of the International Women in Aviation Pioneer Hall of Fame. These women will be honored at Women in Aviation's 26th Annual International Conference, which will be held on March 5th through the 7th in Dallas, Texas. WAI President Dr. Peggy Chabrian said in part, quote, These women and their accomplishments deserve to be recognized so that our members can thank those who came before them and initiated new undertakings or preserve the role of women's contributions throughout aviation history, end quote. The 2015 Pioneer Hall of Fame inductees are Priscilla Pat Blum, who along with Jay Weinberg, founded the Corporate Angel Network, whose mission is to arrange free travel for cancer patients 
traveling to and from their treatment centers in the available seats on board corporate jet aircraft. Phoebe Omley, who was an aviation pioneer recognized for her flying skills and her contributions in promoting aviation, and the mother-daughter team of Deanie and Nancy Parrish, who deserve recognition as untiring volunteers who have recorded the history of the WASP service in World War II. We at ANN salute the WAI for recognizing these important women in aviation. Each week we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. In this video, watch closely. It looks like a jet, but when it passes by, you'll be surprised by what you hear. Search Lay CCO2 on YouTube. After these messages, the Eagle 407 HP receives FAA certification. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we decided to summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Eagle 407 HP helicopter, which is a Bell 407 with an upgraded Honeywell HTS 900 engine installed through a supplemental type certificate, receives FAA certification. Boosted performance is expected for hot and high altitude operations. The FAA has issued guidance to law enforcement agencies regarding the use of UAS. The guidance describe how UAS is and model aircraft can be operated legally and includes options for legal enforcement against unauthorized or unsafe operators. A photographer in Surrey, England was arrested for using a UAV to cover a news event, despite the fact that he was specifically licensed to do so. Police took control of his UAV and arrested him for breach of the peace. He's seeking about $7,500 for lost revenue and UAV damage. The Helicopter Association International announced the winners of its Salute to Excellent Awards in nine categories. The categories are sponsored by industries within the broad scope of helicopter operation. ANN congratulates these industries for their participation in this important program. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A recent FAA decision to allow a real estate developer to use UAVs to commercially photograph properties is a good thing. However, the waiver carries the stipulation that the operator of the aircraft must hold at least a private pilot certificate. Writing in an op-ed piece for Forbes, former NTSB member John Goglia said that to require a person to hold a private license any third-class medical certificate to fly an aircraft that weighs under three pounds is, quote, absurd. Goglia points out that control services of the Phantom 2 Plus Vision, authorized by the FAA, and a small airplane have nothing in common. He also said that ultralight pilots are not required to have any kind of pilot certificate, and sport pilots don't need a medical certificate to fly. Goglia suggests that if the FAA is insistent on some kind of training for UAV operation, they could have picked something less burdensome, such as basic ground training and a student certificate. Well, that's our program for Monday, December 12th. Remember to join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. 
I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.